joke, my man. The, uh, I'm unable to kind of do anything at the public aquarium anymore uh, for the next couple weeks at least, kind of like at a standstill. We all knew this was coming. But uh, in the meantime, I've, I have been neglecting my own aquariums, but they definitely haven't been getting the cleaning uh, that I typically do. Just feeding and doing my water changes for like the past month or two. But being so busy, I haven't been able to do much of anything with my personal hobby at all. Just kind of like focused on launching that, get that new public aquarium. And I mean, I haven't been able to even go to a local fish store in like over a month. Maybe it's been like three months or longer. Shower scrubber on a handle. I can easily replace these when they become too degraded. But this is fine on acrylic. Doesn't scratch it or anything. It does, it is a little bit rough, so uh, it will take this algae off quite easily. I'm just gonna feed these guys a variety of pellets floating and sinking. So I went to my local fish store the other day and uh, for nothing more than personal reasons, I just hadn't gotten to go for a while and it's one of my favorite things to do. Of course, as a hobbyist, we love to go to the pet store. We love to just go see what they got and see what's new and see what we might be able to get. And you know, I started kind of thinking to myself while there, like out of all the videos I've ever made and all of you know, the, the shopping and getting new fish, etc., etc. I've never really covered, and this is very weird, I've never actually covered how to buy aquarium fish. And what I mean by that is simple. Every day, and I mean absolutely every day, I get messages from viewers asking me questions like, I got a 30 gallon aquarium, what should I stock it with? Or what do you suggest I do with this? Or how many fish can I get? Or Etc. 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 And I'm going to give you guys a game plan because, like I said, I've been I'm asked this every day for years upon years. So today I'm going to make this video for a very simple reason. Every time I'm asked that, I'm just going to simply send them this video. If you are looking for uh, to get into the aquarium hobby, buy aquarium fish, you don't even know where to start. Here is the game plan. Just simply go to your local fish store, find them, find all of them, and go look around with absolutely no intentions on buying everything. Trust me, the fish aren't going anywhere. They're gonna get more. They're gonna get more of everything. This initial visit when you go is to simply go and see what you're interested in and see what you like. And here's what I suggest you do. Go to the fish that you like, take a quick picture of it, and in that note, I'm going to add a picture of the fish right below it. I'm going to add its common name, uh, whatever's on the label, its price, and how many they had in this tank roughly, because all of this information is going to come in handy later. I also like to go ahead and take a general look at their dry goods. Do they have, what size aquariums do they have? What type of equipment do they have? All taking visual notes, or you put it in your phone and kind of figure things out that way. You also, you know, and this is just buying the fish if you don't already have an aquarium. I mean, you can pick and choose what you want from this video. And of course, read the comment section below because other people, well, you guys are going to share uh, how you decide on how you're buying fish and that sort of thing. I know most of you probably impulse buy or see something and be like, ooh, I need it. Kind of like what I do. Mind you, I did get something at the store, but I think uh, we'll talk about that in a future video. <laughs> then I asked simple questions to like the local fish store manager or uh, an employee, and it's very simple. When did you guys get these? Uh, and if they say just recently, are they under quarantine? That's kind of what you're getting at. Are these guys safe to kind of add to an established aquarium immediately? Because I do know most people don't have quarantine tanks, but there are some ways that you can have a lot of luck uh, by circumventing that, by simply making sure these guys were quarantined and there's no signs of disease or, or parasites or anything like that on the fish. Now we go home, we have all the information we need. We know what we like, we've got a picture of them, we've got their price, we've got how many they have, and we know the history of that fish. How long have they had it? Has it been quarantined? How long have it been in the store, etc. And that's when you start your research. You get on YouTube and you don't just watch one channel, you watch a multitude of channels, or you go on Facebook and you join a ton of groups and you ask all your questions there. People are always excited and willing to help. Now a huge problem with social media is a lot of people will just look for the answer that they want to hear. So my, my suggestion would be, it doesn't matter if you heard it one place, ask everywhere. Can I add this fish? What size tank does this need? Are they gonna get along? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Research, research, research. 
all spending most of your time just looking into these fish and being suggested. But the reason why we went to the fish store in the first place is because of a very certain thing. If you were to ask me, what can I put in my 50 gallon aquarium? What do you suggest? I'm going to suggest fish that I like, that I know are available to me. I don't know if they're available to you and I don't even know if you're going to like them. And that's why I say go to your fish store for two reasons. One, you'll find everything you like and it's going to actually be available to purchase instead of chasing some random fish that Joey recommended or Steven or Brian or whoever or Samantha or whoever you asked on the internet, make sure it's actually available to you in your location. Now the key to one day having your entire house filled with aquariums, and this is the truth. You kind of have to get everybody in your house involved. Like, do you like this fish or that fish? And I'm kind of present them with fish that you're probably going to get anyways. But what I like to do is say, do you like this? Oh, we'll get it because you like it. Then they kind of feel like it's their fish. They're invested in the aquarium. They actually like it. it they'll become more accepting of it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's a little pro tip for you. Now I meant to actually film all this at the local fish store, use their fish as examples of what to look for in a fish when you're actually ready to purchase one. What are we looking for in the fish's body, their activity, et cetera, but we could just do it with my fish. Unfortunately, there's nobody sick here, so we'll just have to uh, imagine a few things. So when I look at some fish, I look for a number of things, depending on the species, of course. Uh, so for example, when it comes to these guys here, when it comes to an Oscar, I'm looking for, at their finnage, I'm looking for tears and rips, but most importantly, I'm looking for any sort of evidence of parasites that might be on them. I'm looking for cloudy eyes, I'm looking for their gill plates. Uh, is their gill plates curled or are they red or how do they actually look? Are they in great shape? Are they active? Will they eat? I know that like there's so many things to look for, but I'd rather purchase a healthy fish and bring it home and have most success with it uh, instead of, you know, getting something that you didn't know was a problem and you take it home and it's sick. One of the, the, the things that you can't notice, and maybe we'll look at these guys because uh, these guys are all technically wild caught. One of the things you won't notice in a fish is if they have internal parasites, but there are a few, you know, tells that you might be able to figure out if they have an internal parasite. And if they don't, maybe it's too risky. Maybe you just avoid that fish because they are showing signs of sickness. Um, so a few things that I look for is I look at their foreheads. Right above their eyes, is it pinched? Uh, that's a sign of malnutrition. The, they're emaciated. There's something probably within them that is, you know, taking up all their nutrients and or they're just not eating anymore. Um, a sunken belly uh, can sometimes be a tell. Uh, and then, of course, if you see any fish in there that has like stringy white feces or any sort of issues like that, I, I tend to personally avoid the entire aquarium. Now, mind you, all of these guys are not wanting to come home with you. They're not saying, hey, I want to, they want to eat. So this is a good sign. Then we got to look at other fish, like is it hiding? These guys just darted away. Depending on the species, darting away and hiding can potentially be normal. Mind you, I forgot the lights on out here again uh, for like a day and I had an algae bloom. Doesn't take much. But basically overall, I'm looking for a well-shaped body, great form to it healthy finish, they're eating, they're responsive, brightly colored. I'm not trying to buy a fish that's, uh, you know, on its deathbed, especially for new hobbyists. I mean, for somebody a little bit more experienced, that might be a little bit more acceptable to do. Look at the size of this guy in the back. Look at that. He's getting huge. He doesn't look big in video, but absolutely getting monstrous. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to quickly do this video because, you know, if I got this guy when I did get him, he was only, a, you know, four inches long. Now he's almost two feet. The rays are, you know, basically not even uh, half grown. These guys get absolutely monstrous. But you might see me keeping one of these and then you see a small one at the store. Maybe you didn't do enough research and then you're stuck with a fish that's going to need a massive aquarium that's going to live for the next 20 years. That's going to have a food bill equivalent to a small child or a dog, really. Uh... So you kind of want to be careful there. And, and, and the most important thing is simply do your research. It is absolutely beautiful out today. Well, it was, the sun was out. Welcome to Nova Scotia. The pond's looking good, but uh, having a bit of an algae issue and don't really see it. I'm probably gonna have to build a canopy over this. Nothing too crazy, but anyways, um, yeah, the best thing you could do if you're looking to get a new fish or you have an aquarium or you're interested in doing it, simply go 
to your local fish store. Get inspired. See what they have. Build a relationship there. Local fish stores are the lifeblood of the hobby, second to like aquarium clubs and whatnot. And then, you know, social media and those types of groups and whatnot can help guide you away, guide you around. But, you know, go to your local fish store, see what they actually have, see what's in stock and see what's actually available in your area. You're going to find out pricing and, you know, what's in your budget what's not i wish i could take every one of you guys one at a time to the pet store that wants to get into fish because i absolutely love looking i don't care if i see it 20 times i just want to go look at all the fish and see what uh, they have and see what i might possibly get i'm allowed to talk out here too and crows yeah pond's doing well i mean uh it's getting a little bit warmer my son was kind of swimming in it last night but uh as you can see you can kind of see the water going down um uh, it doesn't smell so it's, and and i've done all my tests the the, the ph and um the uh well i guess it's not that bad it's just a bit of a bit of an algae bloom and what i'm thinking about doing is putting the dye back in there by fritz they have this blue pond dye and it like literally eliminated all algae the fish were out way more offered them security and uh but a lot of people were like oh the blue dye doesn't look natural but it there was just so many more benefits that outweighed the the natural look it's weird that I never made this video before, and to be honest with you, I should probably do something a little bit more in depth and, um, you know, actually hand selecting fish and whatnot and what to look for. And if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section below. But what I really want to know is if I were to say, I've got a 50 gallon tank or a 20 gallon tank or a 10 gallon tank, what is your response? Do you recommend a certain type of fish or a certain environment? Or do you ask further questions like, uh, well, what are you interested in? Or what do you think you want? Or what do you... Uh, what what are your plans or you know do you ask them type of questions or do you just say go to your local fish store and see what you can actually get i think that might be the best advice for somebody that's i don't know let me know in the comment section below and if you're new to the hobby read the comments because a lot of the times that's the second half of the video anyways i got to completely renovate the entire gallery all of these aquariums uh are being moved 375 is being moved everything over there is being moved uh to, you know, and there's only seven tanks along these walls. And we're going to change it to 16 tanks. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. I got a couple of weeks to get it done and uh, get a lot of work done here. So if you want to see what's coming next, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I'll see you guys in the next video.